I'm Jasmine. And I'm Brandon. And we've got some comic book news and reviews for you. Hey guys, it's Cubby here with my comic book reviews this week. Now my first book to do is Avengers 1959 number one uh, by Howard Chaikin. I have to say, to start off, I'm not the biggest Howard Chaikin fan. But I am a huge Avengers fan and I love Marvel's mythology. I love anything to do with Marvel. I haven't been reading too many of their current things, but this was a, a book that takes place in the past, so I said I figure might as well give it a shot. It has a lot of older characters, and it didn't seem like it would have too many implications onto what happens now, so I gave it a shot. And I gotta say, I wasn't entirely impressed. Um, the art, Howard Chaikin is not my favorite artist. If you know me, if you know what I like, I like very stylized, very clean, very distinctive artwork that, that kind of adds to the story and doesn't detract from anything. And this book kind of does that. You have like these weird panels that you're trying to figure out how this guy's face is laid out. Like there's a part where Craven, he has a, a, a handlebar mustache with a little thing in it and it just kind of looks weird from the side angle. I mean, I'm nitpicking right now, but with an art in a comic book, it should be one of the more important parts of it instead of the story. And even the story wasn't that great. <laughs> Overall, it was, it was an exciting story, it just wasn't engaging and it wasn't, um, uh, how do you say, good. Um, it was action packed, there was werewolves, saber tooth fighting werewolves, which is awesome. There was some very cool parts, I just don't think it would blow anything out of the water. So I'm going to have to give this a two and a half uh, nerd skulls. Alright guys, my second book to review is The Last of the Greats, number one, by a writer that we actually just recently uh, interviewed, Joshua Hell Fikulov. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that name wrong, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, Josh, but this was actually a really, really awesome book. I loved it. It's pretty much the story of a superhero team, aliens, they're not really superheroes, they're just aliens that come from outer space. They're kind of like superheroes, they're kind of set up in that way where they want to help, they just want to help the world. Um, and people let them at first, and they have a few demands, but people don't really want to see that happen. So they turn on them, everyone dies except for one. And it's their older, it's, I don't know if it's older brother, but it's one of the brothers. And th the book kind of just takes a turn at the end that is, really messed up and really awesome and it kind of it doesn't kind of it really makes me want to see what's going on with the rest of this and I cannot wait to pick up more issues the artwork was stunning very simple but it it carried through really well and there was a lot of like there was one big action splash page that really just blew me out of the water it was really really awesome I got to give this book overall four nerd skulls all right guys my third book was the infinite number three by Robert Kirkman and my favorite artist Rob Liefeld and when I say that Sarcasm is meant in great amounts. Um, I, I've been reading this book, I've been following it, been doing reviews on it, I figured I might as well stay on it, and really the story kind of just took a loop for the weird, not in a cool way. Um, it's about time travel, it's about this guy trying to overthrow a, a, a despot ruler in the future, and he goes back in time and tries to find a younger self of him to help him in this quest. He actually sends people from the future into the past to help him out in later times. There's a lot of surprises coming up, and I see just a lot more turns and twists. And it, I mean, it feels like it's going to be an M. Light Shyamalan book, where, or style book, where it just kind of twists and turns and does all these different plot, plot changes, um, but for really no reason. Um, the artwork, as Rob Liefeld is one of, considered one of the best artists in the business, I just don't see it. I'm not a big fan of his. I don't like his facial expressions because they all look the same. I, I like someone who can deliver a different looking book every single time and, and kind of evolve in his artwork. And it looks like he's doing the same thing that he was doing when he created Cable or Deadpool. And I mean, those are great characters and he's, he's done some awesome things for comics. Just right now, I don't see it being really, really awesome. So I'm going to give this book two nerd skulls. Hey there, nerds. Jasmine here with my comic book reviews for the week. The first one is iZombie 18. I have never read an iZombie book, so when I opened it, I was surprised to see that the pages were actually that sort of soft newspapery book, which I gotta admit, I kind of like. I've read it in a couple other things, and I don't mind it. It's kind of soft. It sort of reminds me of the old days before I read comics anyway, but this story was really cool. Um, you sort of are able just to pick up with it, so I'm not sure if iZombie is one of those books that just has a new story every time but it just follows the lead character through him reminiscing about one of his old partners and like a, what they go through on their mission. So there's like 
Amazonian or Brazilian American Christian missionary turn zombies. It's hilarious and weird and funny. And it sort of reminds me of Hack Flash and a few other books like that. Um, I really liked it, actually. It was really entertaining. And the ending is him looking up at his new partner, who is his old partner's son, which is kind of cool. It's not really a spoiler. You know, it's not any huge revelation. It's just kind of cute and sweet. Um, I really liked it. I'm going to give it four to five nerds goals. Solid writing, solid art. My next review is Red Lanterns number two. I'm not going to lie. I didn't really read Red Lanterns number one. I sort of skimmed through it because it didn't really grab me. And I wrote that in my review on Lurker.com. Go check it out. Um, but two was pretty good. I skimmed through it a little more, but I actually took the time to read it. And it was pretty good. It's sort of atrocitous going through thinking about these old times and coming to the conclusion that he needs help on his great mission. And he actually decides to sort of bump up one of his other Red Lanterns and give them the sort of cognizance that he has. And clearly, if you think back on Red Lanterns, they're all just like screaming and like lava blood, and that's about it. So I think it'll be cool to see Atrocitive at Atrocity have, have interactions with someone else who can actually talk to him, who is a Red Lantern, who knows they are angry and knows why they're angry, other than his cat. So I'm stoked for this. I'm going to give it three and a half out of five Nerd Skulls. Still didn't grab me, but actually I'm interested now, I should say. All right, and my next book is The Strange Talent of Luther Strode, number one. I wasn't really too sure about what this book was going to be about. I kind of joked that it was going to be about Martin Luther King and stuff. Um, but it was actually really cool. A lot of image books are sort of sweet and have good stories, and I like that about them. This one takes that sweet, good story and combines it with like a little bit of blood and gore. When I first opened the book, I was like, this is too much. There's intestines and broken limbs and ripped off limbs and gang, gang bangsters dead and stuff, and kind of creeped me out. But then as I started to turn the pages and turn the pages and you get to know who Luther Strode is, you sort of see how he became the guy who can rip off arms and all that crazy stuff. He was a teenager who read a book on how to become like a manly man and somehow just magically got power, sort of like Peter Parker and getting bit by a spider. But it was really cute because he was in school. He liked this girl. He sort of started to get really cool and strong and she kisses him and it's really sweet and fun and it's enjoyable and the art's good and it's written well and it's not too wordy, which is a hit or miss thing with independent books a lot of times. So I really, really like this. I'm definitely going to keep checking it out. It's got a great story and I really want to see where it goes. I'm going to give this five out of five nerd goals. Check it out. Hey guys, Bobby here with my comic reviews for the week, and my first one is going to be, of course, another Robert Kirkman book, Invincible 83 came out this week. Um, I love this book, uh, I mean, for Robert Kirkman, but even more so for Ryan Otley. I've watched Ryan Otley's art grow into the amazing, sought-after artwork it is today. I mean, DC and Marvel have been trying to get him to do books on their imprints before, and he denies, declines every single time, just because he does not want to do anything but creator-owned work. And, Invincible is another one of that, uh, one of those really good books. Uh, Invincible is staying strong for me because um, they're showing a different side of Invincible. He's le learned a lesson and he's trying to be more compassionate towards his villains. Instead of just beating them up and taking them to prison, he's trying to figure out what, why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, very nice look at how a superhero would handle uh, villains in the real world. I love it. Um, the art is amazing. I'm going to give this book five out of five nerd skulls. My second review for the week is going to be Action Comics number two. This was uh, in the uh, first week of the DC 52 was my favorite book. I'm loving this book because Grant Morrison's writing it. I mean, you can't turn that down. Rags Morales is doing the art, art who I didn't really care about until he was on this book. He, he is born to draw Superman. Uh, another reason I love this book is because it shows a, um, a, a side of Superman that I feel like nobody ever talks about uh, the stronger side. Everyone always wants to talk about how vulnerable Superman is and how weak he is when it comes to um, innocent people. And this book talks way more about how strong he is and how smart he is. And I'm loving this title. Grant Morrison is reinventing the character for me. And I already love Supes. So you guys should be reading this book too. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. My third review for the week is going to be Superior number five. It's, I, I mean, it's been six months since we got the last issue and it left off on a very controversial um, panel. I mean, it, it's, it's an incredible book. It's my uh, favorite book by Mark Miller. I, Mark Miller annoys the hell out of me just because he, um, he makes the rules and if anyone wants to go against them, screw it, you can sit and wait for my, for my books. And I hate that kind of attitude in comics. Um, Lionel Francis Yu, the artist, is one of my least favorite artists because of some, some ways he draws people and things like that. This book has actually me, uh, uh, made me like Lionel Francis Yu again. Um, so that's very important. The biggest thing about this book is that it shows how easy 
the world's problems, like with Al-Qaeda and Afghanistan and everything, would be solved so easily if, it was, if they were all being mediated by a child. Because the innocence of a child could solve any problem. You guys should all be reading Superior because it's better than Kick-Ass, it's better than um, Nemesis, it's better than all of his other books. You should be reading it. I'm going to give Superior number five, five out of five Nerd Skulls. My fourth and final review for the week is going to be Walking Dead number 89. Um, as you guys know, I have uh, had some mixed opinions about the last few issues of The Walking Dead. It had a long stretch of really bad and boring issues where you didn't care what was going on in them, and then, boom, out of nowhere, Carl wakes up, and then it starts getting good again. And right now, with 89, it feels like they're gearing up to be another arc as good, if not better, than the prison arc of The Walking Dead. And if you do read Walking Dead, you know that is the best thing that's come out of the book thus far. Um, it's really interesting to see the slow decline of Rick, um, you know, the slow decline of the entire community of uh, survivors in this book. I mean, it's just so interesting. And, you know, with the uh, novel coming out soon, actually this month, um, The Rise of the Governor, I think that Robert Kirkman is moving towards um, Rick becoming more of an a incompassionate asshole. So, I'm really excited. I think you guys should all be reading this book. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. Hey guys, Brandon here with my comic reviews this week. First off, I got Chew 21. This has been such an enjoyable book so far, and this is kind of the start of a new storyline, it looks like, for Chew. Uh, he's been fired, uh, something that his boss has been looking forward to doing for quite a while, and uh, more or less he's been... Not, okay, not exactly fired, but demoted. He's now a traffic cop, not working for the FDA anymore. Very humiliated, but he turns it around and makes the best of things and almost does better than he's, uh, you know, done with them. So heading in the right direction until we get to that last page, which kind of sets us up for what looks like the rest of the storyline is going to be. But all in all, still a very entertaining book, something I am definitely looking forward to reading each month. I'm giving it four out of five Nerd Skulls. Next up, I got Reed Gunther number five. This has been such a fun book so far. You know, you got action, comedy, just overall a really good book. This one we got Reed in New York, away from the wild, wild west. And we got monsters and sideshow freaks and just all around, I can't stop saying good things about this book. It, it's a kid's book. It's an adult book. It's, it's just, it's a book for everyone. And if you're not on board with this by now, you really should be. I'm giving this five out of five Nerd Skulls. Lastly, I got Penguin, Pain and Prejudice, uh, number one. This is a heavy book. Uh, you really look into the psyche of Penguin from the time he was born to all the abuse he went through his entire life for looking the way he did and just how it shaped him into just such a mean, cruel person. And it really gives you a different perspective. Penguin is always one of those characters that I always felt was written oddly at times. You know, he wasn't always this menacing crazy villain. Sometimes he just sits back and works a little crime here and there, but really, really, really intense. Uh, was kind of iffy to pick this up, but I will definitely be continuing this, this mini-series and seeing where it goes. I'm going to give it four to five Nerd Skulls, and you guys should definitely check it out. All right, guys, that is going to do it for all the comic book news and reviews this week, but until next week, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube page, as well as checking out nerdlocker.com. We'd also like to thank Maximum Comics for providing some of our books each week. If you're a local Las Vegan, be sure to check out one of their two convenient locations or check them out online. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And we will see you next week for even more comic book news and reviews. Bye!